Kyle Wilson and in this video we're going to break down how to perform the double leg takedown for MMA. Let's begin by looking at the mechanics of the double leg takedown. The double leg takedown can be broken down into three basic steps. The level change, the penetration shot and the lift. Once we've reviewed them steps we'll look at how we can set your double leg takedown up so you can land it inspiring our competition. Step one is the level change. With the level change, I'm basically dropping my level so that when we move on to step two, I can get as underneath my opponent as possible. With physics, the more I can get underneath or as close to some center of mass as possible, the easier it's going to be to lift. My opponent's center of mass is approximately one to two inches underneath his belly button. So I want to get myself, my torso underneath him as much as possible. The lower I can get, the easier this is going to be. Now, the technique on the level change is bending my knees and keeping a straight back. I see a lot of beginners when they hit their level change, they think that it's all about hinging at the hips and trying to reach the opponent. This is going to make it extremely hard to lift him and it's going to print, put a lot of pressure on my lower back, which means I'm more likely to become injured. So, again, I'm out of range here and again we can look at setups with the hands in the moment. But for the level change, I'm bending my knees, keeping a straight back, trying to get as low as possible so I can get as underneath my opponent as possible. Step two is the penetration shot. So after I've hit my level change, it's about trying to get as deep underneath my opponent as possible. So a level change, I take a deep step with my front leg and then the rear leg follows. So just to slow that down, level change, deep step with the front leg, trying to get my knee as far in between his legs as possible and then the rear leg follows and finish in this squatted position. Don't make the mistake of keeping this rear leg out, you want it underneath you so you can begin to drive off your opponent here. As I do this, I'm trying to get as deep underneath him as possible. What I don't want to do is make the mistake of shooting shallow. So once I hit the level change, by shallow I mean not stepping deep enough with this leg and then trying to lift from here. If I can't get close and underneath my opponent and tight to his knees and hips, this makes it easier for my opponent to stuff my head and begin to sprawl. Which is of course bad news for me. So on that level change, Again, it's important to try and get that lead knee as underneath my opponent as possible. I'm trying to grab behind the back of his knees and suck them in nice and close. Level change. Penetration stuck with the front leg. Head nice and tight to the body here. Sucking in behind his knees. Rear leg follows, so I'm ready to lift or run him down here. Another note on this is all about keeping the head tight. If my head is in space, my opponent can wrap a guillotine. So I want to keep my head tight to his ribs, almost looking up. So if he just begins to wrap that guillotine, I can drive up and potentially take the back. But we'll worry about that in a separate video. So, just to recap this all together slowly. Level change. Penetration, step with the front leg. Head nice and tight. Rear leg immediately follows. All the meantime, sucking in his hips, ready to run my opponent down from here. I want to highlight how important it is that step one and step two come as two separate steps. A lot of people, especially beginners, try to combine the two. They almost try to level change and penetration step at the same time. So my shoulder, my body weight is called it coming diagonal towards Harrison's knee, like so. The thing is with this is one, generally I can't step as deep, so I can't get underneath Harrison to make the lift easier. The second thing is, if you think about his sprawl, he wants to get his hips and his knees back on that diagonal angle here. If I'm driving my shoulder into his leg, I'm just helping him hit his sprawl. I'm enforcing the leg traveling in that direction. So, what you don't want to do is shoot diagonal, which will get sprawled on. What you do want to do is make sure that your level change is on a clear vertical path down and your penetration step is on a straight horizontal path. Step three of the double leg is the lift. So again, step one, level change. 
Step two, penetration shot. Now it's time to complete my takedown. Now there's lots of different variations out there on the internet and some people like to teach this where you drop to the front knee here and you may choose to wrap the leg or stand up and drive them over sideways. Again, all perfectly good variations but not what we're covering in this video. I've always found the most energy efficient way to complete the double leg is to run the person down. So, once you're out here and I've took my deep penetration step, I'm going to immediately begin sprinting. And this is why it's so important to bring that back leg with me on the penetration shot. As I begin running with Harrison, I'm going to try and lift him over my shoulder. Also notice that I'm almost going to scoop my own hips underneath him. Once more. Now you've got your opponent elevated in the air, you want to use this opportunity to pass guard as you complete the takedown. If you can pass into side control, this saves you the hassle of passing guard at a later date. It also gives you more options to smash your opponent, like you can smash the like button if you're finding this useful. So, the detail on passing the legs once you've got the elevation. Let's say I've run my opponent down here and I've got him in the air. My head is to the right of his body. I want to bring his body across. So I'm going to use my head to tilt him to the left. So whilst the head is going right to left and I'm driving his torso to the ground, I'm also bringing my arms left to right so that I can clear his body as I land. And as I do so, I'm landing straight into my side control and you can immediately begin looking for your cross space and sprawling your weight out on top of him. There's two big mistakes that beginners make when trying to run their opponent down. They might get step one and step two perfect, but once they find themselves in this deep penetration step, you can see that sometimes they pause and think about this too much. That half a second is critical in a fight. At the end of the day, the guy's gonna have good reaction. So if you don't knock him off that and straight away and begin running him down, then he's gonna immediately start sprawling. So as soon as you get deep on that penetration step, you need to sprint. Don't stop and give the person the opportunity to sprawl. The other mistake beginners make is that they try to lift on the spot. So they hit that level change, the penetration step, and rather than running down, they try to muscle here and lift the opponent up. This makes them a lot heavier. You want to run the opponent down, get them off balance, scoop your hips underneath. This is going to make them feel a lot lighter. It's going to take a lot less of your energy, which of course you need in an MMA fight. Before we move on to setting up your double leg, let's just put all these three steps together. Step one, level change. Step two, deep penetration step. Step three, begin running my opponent down, lifting, past the legs, position to side control. Understand the mechanics behind the double leg takedown. Let's look at some setups. So, setup number one, we're going to set this up with our own strikes. Now, the bread and butter combination for setting up your double leg is a jab, cross, left hook. So, the idea is as I pop my jab, my opponent will go to parry, block, slip, whatever, but there's a threat there. They have to bring their hands high, they have to do something, or they'll be hit with a jab. The same principle with the cross. When I throw the cross and I'm looking to set up the double leg, I like to actually level change slightly and throw it to the body. So I'm bending my knees, bringing my torso down. This looks like half a level change. So when I'm attacking the different levels in MMA, they don't know where the next shot's gonna come, whether it's a takedown, a body shot, a head shot, etc. So it's always good to get the opponent guessing and attacking the different levels of the body. So we jab high to bring the hands up. The hands are up, that exposes the body. It also disguises my uh, level change later on. Now the hand's down, this leaves space on the left side to pop up with my left hook. The reason the left hook onto the double leg works so well is because I'm moving my fist and my torso in the same direction I want to put my head. Because he's got the left leg lead, I want to put my head on the outside of his body to the right side. 
Well, the left hook is coming left to right. So when I level change, my head is already here. So let's just put this all together again. Jab to the head, right hand to the body, left hook high, level change, penetration step, run down, get the elevation and complete. Let's look at some repetitions. The second way to set up your double leg takedown is off a reactive shot. So we're going to try and engage our opponent in what they think is a boxing match, so they're concentrating on throwing their hands, and we're going to duck underneath their punch and hit the level change. The reason this is so effective is because when you're shooting from a distance or you're setting it up for yourself, you're responsible for getting your weight underneath your opponent. And it's really important to like, keep the penetration shot as I've already stepped on. The benefit of the reactive shot is that if I can get my opponent to step on a punch, they're bringing themselves towards us. We don't have to just bring ourselves towards them. We meet somewhere in the middle and you get really nice and deep on the takedown. The other thing is that when they step heavy on a shot and they bring their body weight forward, it's going to make it harder for them to get their hips back and sprawl, which means they're less likely to defend the takedown. So don't think of this one too much as a set technique, but more of a strategy or philosophy or approaching double leg takedowns. George St. Pierre was probably the best MMA, MMA fighter to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop a jab to Harrison, he's gonna parry or catch it, he's gonna return a jab. I'm gonna have a turn jab. I'm stuck it underneath, hitting my level change, and my penetration shot. You see how deep I am now and how nice and uh, deep this deep knee is for his legs? Now I'm in a good position to run him down, scoop him up, and clear his legs. Let's put this all together now so you can see what I mean. It's really important to use these setups because shooting a double leg out in the wild is a big movement, they're likely to see it coming and you're likely to get spooled on. So when you're in these sparring matches, practice the punching combination, practice level changing underneath the shots and see how you get on, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video, subscribe if you want more content like this. If you have any questions or video requests, again, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for your time.